Hey, what's going on, world? Traeger Nation, Montana Mix family, anyone new joining in? I'm Chef Eduardo Garcia. You're in my kitchen. Welcome. Today, we are going to knock into a Traeger Kitchen Live, and we're going to cook three different things today, all of them near and dear. One specifically, which is our cochinitas recipe. We've never shared this. Uh, it's been in the family, not a secret, we're sharing it with all of you right now. Um, but we're gonna do a cochinitas recipe. I'll get into what that is and how it comes about, but it is a pork-based taco filling that is our family favorite. We're also going to be grilling off some pineapple as a topping for our tacos, and we're gonna do a tiki cocktail that takes grilled peaches and grilled lemon, makes a simple syrup. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful cocktail mix, and we're gonna make it family style in a pitcher because we all know we're coming up on the holidays, and uh, I, you know, the more the merrier this time around. So as we get going, those are the recipes we're going to get into. I'm also wearing a snazzy apron that I definitely want to call out. This is a B4BC boarding for breast cancer. They empower those dealing with or aware of breast cancer through active sports like boarding to look at cancer differently. And what I love about this company, Traeger, you're hearing it through me right now. What I love about this company is that they give back and they care. So proceeds from the sale of this Headley and Bennett apron are going to B4BC. So there's going to be a link showing up. Get into that, pop into the link, get yourself an apron, get, get involved, and know you're supporting a good cause. So next up, we are going to check on some peaches. So the tiki cocktail is spiced rum, brandy, and peach brandy. We're also going to make a simple syrup with Grilled and whole lemons. I just pulled these off the Ranger. So these are nice and beautifully charred. Well, I should say more caramelized than charred. So we're gonna throw these into our lemon peels with some sugar. And this is gonna be the beginning of a simple syrup. I wanna show everyone how this goes down because this is definitely our first step here. So we have peeled lemons, as you can see, I just used a carrot peeler, so a vegetable peeler would do fine. If you've got a good sharp paring knife, you can use a paring knife too. Um, and really, you're going to take off the entire zest of the lemon. A note or a chef or pro tip is as you're taking the peel off, the pith is the white portion. And we don't want to be so heavy handed on the pith, so you're, you are going to get some white on there. Um, but we want to just not dig your peeler in and take a lot of it. That pith can tend to have a bitter aftertaste. So what we'll do to start making this, we're going to take granulated sugar and pour this right over our peeled lemons. We've got our caramelized lemons. I'm using a strainer just to help keep some of the seeds out. But you will strain this afterwards, so not completely necessary. There we go. We're just going to make sure you'll find that you think about squeezing fresh lemons, fresh limes, um, when they're raw, they, uh, they require a little muscle, right? You have a countertop squeezer or a hand squeezer, but you'll find that once your citrus has been cooked, it's pretty easy and it will just come flowing out of the fruit itself. I think you're gonna like this one. You can smell it. I have a chef friend of mine, Ranga Pereira, and he consistently, um, when serving lemon, lime, orange, grapefruit, and especially in cocktail making. So Ranga, I hope you hear me. I'm giving you kudos right now, bud. But he always caramelizes his fruit, it seems like. And he makes a good cocktail. So I'm a believer in this, big time. Okay, here's our last one going in. Use a spoon. I just want to make sure I get all of this in there. Okay, that looks great. So then, next up, we're just going to give this a stir. So we have our caramelized juice from the lemons, all of the peels from those lemons, and some granulated sugar. I tend to use a blonde sugar, just dealer's preference, I guess. Um, 
a totally bleached white cane sugar is just fine. I feel like we're using dark liquors though, so having a darker simple syrup is not gonna hurt anything. All right, now as it is with most granulated things, whether you're making a brine for your turkey coming up or a brine for a pork chop, with sugar it's the same as salt. These are crystallized, granulated. Once they come in contact with moisture, such as this lemon juice, they will break down, it will completely liquefy, but it's just gonna take time. So we're gonna give this 10 or 15 minutes. Set it over here to the side. We're gonna check on our peaches. And the peaches, we're gonna to add to our pitcher almost as a garnish, but of course, even the flavor of the fruit is gonna come out uh, in the cocktail. So we're gonna head over to the grill and check them out and see if they're ready to come off. It's looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna move these to the front. Actually, yeah, I wanna give them one more minute, I think. So we're just gonna let those go for another minute. Keep our plate here on standby. We'll come back to our station. And next up, I guess we should get into this beautiful pork picnic. The picnic is the section of your piggy that is, let's see, anatomically correct. It's gonna be right here. So it's part of the shoulder. Uh, sorry, not here, down here. It's part of the shoulder and it is where the elbow meets the trotter. So this is the elbow of the pig. This is where it's gonna meet your trotter down here. And so further up on your shoulder is where you're gonna have the bone blade of the scapula in. I really like this cut. A, it tends to always come with this exterior skin, which adds, for, so I'm, I got a backpedal here. I'm very excited about this dish. So as I explain why I choose this cut, the dish itself is called cochinitas. So cochinitas is this fantastic piggy marriage between your cochinita pibil, which is a typical and Yucatecan. So it's known to be from the Yucatan region of Mexico. That's down on the peninsula. It's where my father's from. It's where the Mayan people made their home for centuries and, and millennia. And the cochinita pibil is a whole suckling pig marinated in spices, wrapped in banana leaves, and cooked in a pit. Sounds good, right? It is good. So when you think of this dish, the cochinitas, half of the dish is that this is gonna be braised, and it's go after it sears on the trigger, it's gonna get braised, meaning it's gonna get covered in a wet environment and slow cooked. The next step to the method, though, is once it comes out of the oven, and it's fried, it, once it comes out of the oven and it's steamed beautifully and it's soft and it's falling off the bone, the next step is that we're, we take it and, we're, and that's where the itas of the cochinitas comes in. And the carnitas is what gives the second half of this dish its life. So once the pork comes out of the grill, falling apart, so it will cook for about four to five hours depending on your cut at 300 degrees, we end up cranking the heat again because for the carnita style, or for the carnitas part of this recipe, we're gonna shred the meat off the bone. It should be falling apart. And the residual juices and the residual fat will cook. The juices will evaporate into the muscles of the cooked meat and what remains is the fat. And then what happens is the fat starts to fry those muscles. And what we love about it is that you go from a tender pulled pork effectively to a fried crispy pork, and that's what makes it cochinitas. So step number one for our cochinitas is that we're gonna take the seasoning blend, and the seasoning blend is a mix of our Montana Mex, chile, sweet, and jalapeno. So for this blend, we have all of these blended together for our cochinitas dry rub. My sister Indra started making this seven years ago, I think, when we started developing these seasonings. And so what you get, and I have it blended here, but what you get is the jalapeno seasoning, which is garlic, it's oregano, it's cilantro, it's sea salt, and jalapeno, plus our mild chili blend. Now mild chili blend is four different mild red chilies. 
Ancho, Pasilla Negra, in New Mexico, and Guajillo. And then our sweet seasoning blend adds a really magical component to this dry rub. Orange peel, allspice, clove, aji amarillo, chile, sea salt, and cane sugar, plus cinnamon all come together to make this a beautiful, beautiful mix. Before I add this to the pork, my intuition tells me I need to head over and check our peaches, so we're gonna do that. Let's check this out. These now look ready to go. Yeah, that's what you want. Nice score marks, nicely caramelized. There's still integrity to the peach. It's not gonna completely fall apart in our pitcher, but it's gonna add some nice flavor to our cocktail. Now, before we leave the grill though, I wanna get this prepped out for our pork shoulder coming up. So I'm gonna take a griddle. This skillet, as you can see, has higher sides. And again, we're sort of improv if you will, because we're using the Ranger, because we're in my kitchen and I have a professional exhaust hood. So it's fall, 30 some degrees, with wind and traffic and everything else outside. So we bring our kitchen in here for these TKLs. So whether you're cooking on potentially a bigger grill at home and not the Ranger, I just wanna call that out that in this scenario for the pork, I may be using a Dutch oven and, um, and not a skillet, but a Dutch oven won't fit on our Ranger. So, a little bit of TV magic going on here, but the point is, I'm putting our cast iron or a Dutch oven, whatever you use, and I'm getting it on the grill to warm up and get smoking hot. So I'll close the lid. We'll come back here after we have our pork nicely seasoned. The best way to cook taco veggies on the Traeger, whether it's mushrooms, calabaza, or squash, zucchini, or onion. My go-to is I want to take them just like these peaches. I want to take those vegetables and keep them whole if possible. And then once they come off the grill, then I'll cut them, then I'll dice them or slice them however I want them to be for my taco. But taking a whole portobello, taking a whole cauliflower broccoli, a spaghetti squash, peppers, the world's your oyster when it comes to veggie tacos. I'm gonna grill them whole first, easier to move. You're gonna get all of the roasted flavor of the exterior of the fruit going into the inside. You're not gonna lose any moisture. Just like cooking a whole chicken, same concept. Whole, whole, whole vegetable cookery on grill is always my go-to. So, we got our pork picnic. Next step for the pork picnic is, you know, we're definitely giving it a look, and I've trimmed this prior, but we're making sure that there are no loose ends, no bits and pieces that are gonna burn or fall off. We're also just making sure it's generally clean. No funky bits, looks pretty good to me. The next step is we're gonna take our seasoning blend, and we're gonna make sure we coat this whole roast evenly. Are you using store-bought tortillas or homemade tortillas? <laughs> That's a great question. I feel like I'm being called out in the one time of the year that I buy tortillas. Usually at home here in our house, my wife and I, we make tortillas from scratch. It reminds me of my dad. It's something that we used to always do. He's no longer around on earth anymore, so we usually make them. Um, I would encourage you to do so. It's a company called Masiello that makes very good masa. Um, buying them also works just as well. But make sure you have tortillas no matter what. So once we have, you can see how full coating on this side, and we're really just gonna take our time. We're gonna make sure that this whole roast gets all the seasoning. Little history behind the seasoning blend it really started with my sister making this exact dish and then moving on throughout the years when dishes would come up where I just would be cooking at home. I pretty much carry these three seasonings all the, all the time with me. They're here, they live on the shelf, and I started swapping and blending. So sometimes it may be 80% red chile, 10% the jalapeno, 10% of the sweet, or you mix it around. 
what we found is that the blend itself was very, very good. Whether you're cooking seared, cooking meats, whether you're cooking bird, whether you're cooking fish or veggies, blending the three seasonings is pretty winning combo. And I started calling it triple threat, which now that I think about it, I don't know where that comes from. Is it a game show somewhere, funny car racing movie somewhere. To either which way, it's three different seasoning blends brought together. Other folks started calling it triple threat. And I think for today's purposes, it just seems to be a beautiful all-purpose blend of all three of our seasonings that really works well on this pork recipe. I want to take good note though of what I'm doing here because I'm, when you put your dry blend on, I usually like to wait a minute, some time. What happens is if you put your dry blend on like this and you say, okay, now this is ready to go, the second you pick it up, a lot of that dry blend is going to fall off, which is fine, but we don't want to cook it immediately. We want to dust our seasoning blend onto the meat that we're working with. And give it a minute to soak in, get wet, and adhere to the meat that we're cooking. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Let's set this here. Give my hands a quick wash. We've had Cochinitas cook-offs before on multiple sides of the United States. The last Cochinitas cook-off we had was last summer on the East Coast. I'm pretty certain that my sister took home the title on that one. And the reason I mention it is because you can take a recipe like this and you can ad lib to suit whatever you got in the fridge. Right now, I know I have orange juice here, so I'm going to get orange juice and add that to this um, braise. But let's say you have pineapple juice, let's say you have pear juice, grape juice, apple juice, cherry juice. Um, would, cherry juice would probably be very interesting on this. Um, but it, what, I mean, the way that so much of cooking comes about, or a really good recipe, or a recipe ends up becoming sort of a family staple, is one day an opportunity hits, you need to come up with a meal, what do I have in the fridge? And I'm pretty certain Indra had orange juice or pineapple juice kicking around, and so she used a blend of those. Today, I'll just use the orange juice as our braise, but I just want to throw out that sort of recommendation or chef's tip that you can combine both juices or any juices if you want. It's going to go quite well. I like the looks of our roast. So the next step in this process is going to be the sear or the browning or blackening or caramelization of it. And, you know, I highly recommend when you get to this point of your recipe, I have my ranger set at 450. That maxes out how high the, ran the ranger's max temperature range or cooking range is 450. I would recommend going higher to get a good blackened sear on this. I, I would recommend going up, maybe 480, 475, 500 even. What happens is every time we open and close the lid, we're going to lose some heat. These machines are very good. These girls are very good at bringing that heat back up or getting back up to temp quickly. So the note would be get it as hot as you can get before you sear it. Let's go give ours a look. I'm going to say that's ready to go. So I'm going to grab our pork. We're going to come over to our grill. And first step before we add it, we're going to use an avocado oil and make sure we have about eighth of a cup in the bottom. What happens when you're searing and or pan frying, especially with oil, is it's going to start to evaporate and not evaporate, it's gonna to start to aerate. So as it steams and spurts, you're gonna lose some of that oil. There's plenty of fat on the pork itself, but because it's so heavily seasoned, we're not gonna have an immediate render off of this. And so I really want to, um, I really wanna add that avocado oil to 
just make sure we have enough fat to make this first part of the cookery, which is the sear. We want it to be a positive sear. And so having a little of that oil is gonna help be a lubricant between the hot pan and the tender flesh of the pork. Also wanna add, you can see where there's this portion of the trotter. I'll just take a little bit of our residual seasoning, get it on top, it's in the pan, there we go. Now from here, we're gonna let this sear, we're gonna let this cook, we'll close the lid. We'll come back and check that out here in just a sec. Elk recipes, someone have a successful hunt? I like it. I do have elk recipes. I have an elk shank recipe that I'm coming out with in three weeks, I believe, and also a jalapeno breakfast sausage recipe that comes out next week. And that's an elk breakfast sausage. Next up, I think we'll get into, I'm gonna prep our pineapple. So our pineapple, you can roast these whole. I'm gonna cut it into quarters today though, just given the space that we have on our grill. So start with, take the top and tail off, cut around to the outside. Using mustard or any kind of condiment or paste as a binder for that seasoning blend on the outside is not a bad call. For the Latino cochinitas, I wouldn't use it, um, but I don't think, um, but you know, to each his own. I think actually maybe a spicy brown, uh, spicy brown mustard could be quite nice, actually. I like that question. Hey, and keep them coming. You know, I think in these TKLs, these are meant to be interactive and engaging. And I know that for me, being able to hear your questions really helps transform the experience for me from um, being a solo event to what really matters most in the kitchen for me, which is that we get to cook together and that it's really a communal way of just staying, staying psyched, right? So next up, we'll take our pineapple I'm just gonna have it. Give it a little trim there. We're not gonna want any of that. There we go. And we'll just keep in mind that we have a pork roast searing off. So I've got my one ear behind me right now. So then for the pineapple, I'm gonna cut it into quarters next. There's an interior part of the pineapple that I'm gonna recommend that everybody remove. It's the spine right here, or the heart of the pineapple. I find the easiest way to remove it is to just cut it into clean quarters, and then once it's quartered, I'll take a knife from the side just like this and do a nice generous cut, which should remove most of that. Great question. So, hey chef, here are you talking about all these recipes. Where are we gonna find them? So for the cochinitas recipe, this is on the Traeger website, as well as the tiki cocktail um, and the grilled pineapple. For all of our Montana Mex recipes, including the taco recipe, they're on our website as well at montanamex.com, and as well as the products that we're using today. So if you go to Trey Grills, there are thousands of terrific recipes there. Um, they're courteous enough to invite me to do a TKL and let me come play in the kitchen. And one of the things that I really appreciate about that is the opportunity to bring my seasoning blends, the Montana Mex blends, into the play that we have here in the kitchen uh, together and give it sort of my twist. And so with the pineapple, we're gonna split this up into two different grilled pineapples. One of them, we're going to add just 
our Montana Mex sweet seasoning too. So the recipe, if you go to Traeger.com and you go to whole grilled pineapple, they're gonna use honey and brown sugar and cinnamon to grill a whole pineapple and it's gonna be beautiful and taste great. Really, the same components are here in this tin. So you have cinnamon, you have two different types of sugars, but it, we also have allspice, ginger, ají amarillo chili, sea salt, clove, and so, I want, and orange peel. And so I'm taking sort of a next bump up from that, and this is going to garnish our cocktail. And you'll see I'm just going to give it an even coating. There we go. And so for time and space, again, this is a whole pineapple recipe, which I encourage you doing. For today, we're breaking this up into smaller pieces. And we're also gonna go a different way for the pineapple that tops our tacos, our cochinitas tacos. And so we're gonna take our Montana Mex red chili blend. This is the ubiquitous chili powder that we've all been cooking with for years and years and years from the grocery store shelves but it's elevated. It's four different ground dry red chiles and sea salt. We'll take our red chile. In this, in Mexico, they would call this enchilado, is when something is just wrapped in chile, and that's what we're doing. These are mild chili blend, though, and so it's not gonna be spicy, per se. And I am also gonna add a little of our sweet seasoning blend to this as well. Definitely. Yep. Question, can you use fruit nectar instead of juice? You can definitely use fruit nectar. I think fruit nectar tends to be sweeter, have a higher sugar content. So again, just keep in mind the end result, not necessarily looking for candied cochinitas at the end. We're looking for a sweet, spicy, savory, fatty, unctuous pulled pork. All right. Our pineapple looks good. We're gonna throw this on the grill. We're gonna check our pork, and then we'll come back here and um, put our cocktail together. Come on, little buddies. Let's see what we got going on in here. So we're gonna take our pineapple right directly on the grill. There we go. And so now with our pork roast, we wanna give this a look and really about, my experience with this recipe is about eight minutes per side. Again, not all roasts are created equal. As you can see, because we're dealing with the picnic side of the shoulder, it's a rounded edge. So we're gonna turn it over. That looks really good. And so now from this point, you want to get this exact same color on all the sides. So even if you have a base cut like right here, what we'll end up doing is after this bottom side sears, we're gonna take it and we're gonna flip it onto that bottom side. So I'm gonna end up swapping this out with a roast that has already gone through the four hour cooking process and is already falling off the bone. And so in a few minutes, we'll pull this off, we'll swap it out for that one, and we'll start showing the final process of the cochinitas, which is the fry up, which is where all of the pork breaks down and starts frying and crisping up. So we'll get to that just after our cocktail. I haven't. Do you like them? I haven't used Matt's new pellets. Don't tell Matt. Matt, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I'll get to it. I've been a little busy. I do appreciate, though, that someone with the barbecue acumen like Matt Pittman, though, partnered up with Traeger to say, hey, we'll get you a custom blend. That's pretty exciting. I feel like as a private chef, so I worked as a yacht chef for 10 years, 
And one of the things I missed most was cooking with other people. And so in a way, Matt Pittman comes out with a bag of pellets and says, hey, that's my pellet blend. Highly encourage everybody, go get that blend. Go check it out. I mean, that's the combination of a powerhouse of culinary intellect like Traeger, plus someone who's spent over a decade focused on barbecue, coming together to say, hey, here's best in class, Matt Pittman style. That's pretty neat. I love that. Cocktail making time. Let's check this out. So here's our caramelized lemon simple syrup. You can see how there's still a little bit, but not much. Granulated sugar in the very bottom here. So I'm just giving this a stir again. We really, we want all of that sugar to completely break down and dissolve. Smells terrific. If you haven't cooked with grilled fruits before, then a cocktail makes it into your weekly, monthly, or somehow your annual rotation. Um, try this out, you know, the, just the smell of it. It's like no other simple syrup. I'm clearly getting the lemon, but I'm getting this little bit of that smoky, deeper, caramelized footprint that only a grilled fruit will give you. And I think having that as a cocktail making attribute, that's pretty fun. Okay, so that is what it looks like. Once strained, you're going to end up with a simple syrup just like this. So, here we go. Let's make our cocktail. I'm going to grab some ice. We had a fair amount of ice to this. I believe that part of the recipe and is in the dilution that happens. So it, at first glance, it starts pretty stiff. And then as the ice melts, it's going to start tapering down and really balance out. So there's our ice in. Now the liqueurs we use or the spirits we use we have a peach brandy, we have a spiced rum, we also have a regular or straight brandy. So start with the straight brandy, we'll do two ounces. Last time I tried this with you all, I spilled half a bottle on the counter. So. We're just going to go nice and nice and easy on it. That's two ounces. Only need one pour of that one. That's our regular brandy. We'll go with our spiced rum. I can smell the cochinitas that I've already cooked ahead of time. I can smell it right now. And that's usually it tells me that it's, it's time. When you start smelling your food in the kitchen, saying, hey, now it's time. OK, so lastly, we're going to add our peach brandy. We're going to do a double up on this. This is a total of four ounces. And then lastly, we're going to use our simple syrup. How long does the simple syrup last for? That's a good question. If it was just straight sugar, the question was how long does simple syrup last for? Infused simple syrups, especially if there's organic matter like bits of lemon pulp, charred bits of the rind in here, it's going to not last as long as if it was just straight sugar and water. However, as I think we know with sugar, it's a preservative. And so syrups tend to last quite some time. Recommend keeping them refrigerated and labeled. 
Otherwise, you'll find it in five months and wonder, what was that? Before I stir this, double duty. I want to check on our pork. I want to check on our pineapple. So I'm going to run back to the grill real quick. Looks good. Yeah, there we go. That is what we're going for. Now we're going with the third side. Don't know, there we go. Closed, I like it, there's headspace. But what we will do is we'll swap that out for the other pork roast that we already started that's falling apart. And we'll bring that in to finish this dish up. So, next up. Give this a stir. Last step to this is just letting it sit right now. Again, the ice cubes are gonna dilute this mixture and that's, on, uh, that's by design. So it'd be quite stiff if you just tried it right now. And then, so we'll build a cocktail glass when we get to plating tacos here in a few minutes, but we'll just let this sit for the time being. I wanna show everyone how I go about with the last part of well, not the last part, but the braising part of the pork. I'm gonna pull this one off and show you just what the next step is, the braising, and then we'll bring our other hot one, our other hot pork shoulder out as if it came out of the grill and show you how we break it down. So, orange juice, have our pork shoulder. Again, if we were cooking only this, what we would do is you can see that we have this side has not been seared yet, but you have to imagine that the entire pork has been nicely browned, has been nicely cooked and seared. So the next step, and if you're using a Dutch oven, you'll have a lid, nice tight fitting lid. If you're just using a skillet, you can cover this with foil. But we're gonna take our juice and... I like to always pour it over the roast. I like to imagine that the roast, eventually we will end up turning this and checking it throughout the four hour cooking process. There we go. So from this point moving forward, you have your pork shoulder nicely seared. You have your juice added. You would then cover this, whether it's with a lid, whether it's with tin foil, and you're gonna let it go at 400 degrees for four hours. And that is just my rule of thumb. So if you go home, you try this recipe, which I hope you do. A, I wanna hear all about it. B, please send me some photos, because I wanna see what you're eating, and I wanna see how it turned out. And then three, this recipe is meant to guide you into the dish as it's going to come about in your home. So whether it's the pan you're using, the size of the pork roast you're using, the juice you're using, all of that can be a variable. And then of course, if you end up wanting a little bit more liquid in your finished dish, you're gonna add a little bit more juice and only you are gonna know that after you've made this one time first. So from this step, we've added our liquid now it's going to do the slow and low cook. So on your grill, you would turn it down from your super high hot 500 degree searing temp and you're going to drop that down to 300 degrees and you're going to go at a minimum of four hours. What you're looking for, we'll show you here right now, we'll bring in a hot roast and what we're looking for is that it's falling apart off the bone. So I'm going to fly this out of our picture. I'm gonna pull this one in. That's still quite a hot pan though, so. So now with this roast, and I've been getting after this, probably checked it three times throughout its cooking. So as you can see, and this is just for the size of the pan, this is, was a four pound roast, and you can see 
that it's falling off the bone, right? And so what my sister would encourage, and Indra, if you're listening, I want to do you proud with this recipe because this really is, this is, and this is, I guess the case in point, that a recipe is a guiding light towards your own signature dish. And so what my sister would do is she would say, keep your pieces of pork nice and chunky at this point. You don't want to shred this too finely like you would for a pulled pork. We like to leave some of the bigger chunks. What I do want to do is I just want to make sure we pull it all off the bone. Okay, so now from here, the next step. is this is gonna go on the grill. We're gonna remove our taco pineapple, or we'll check it out, we'll see how it's going. But we'll wanna put this back on the grill, and at this point, you're cranking that heat back up, okay? So the, the way that the dance with the temperature on your grill at home is gonna start like this. Super high heat, you're gonna sear this pork shoulder off really nicely, brown it up on all the sides. You're gonna pull it off, drop that heat down, 300, get it wrapped, Get the juice in there, throw it in, let it cook slow and low for four hours at a minimum. Then you're gonna pull it out. You're gonna pull it off the bone, just like we did. There's residual juice and fat that has now rendered off the pork. That's all part of the final cooking process. So the heat gets cranked back up onto the grill, 500, 480 if you have it, and we put it back on for its final sear. So here we go. Check to make sure we got hopper full of pellets. We do, using our hickory pellets. We really like hickory pellets. They feel they're super versatile. As you can see, Traeger gives you a nice little readout right here. Good with anything, which is my stance on hickory. And then great for vegetables, pork, chicken, cow. While we're over here at the grill, I'm gonna look at our pineapple. It's looking quite good. So we're gonna pull, I'm gonna leave the red chili one. I'm gonna pull both of these, I think. We'll pull both of these right now. We'll close the lid on our pork. Let it do the final crisp. Come back over. How long did you cook the pork before adding the orange How long did we cook the pork before we added our orange juice? It's going to depend on the grill you're using. It's going to depend on the size of the roast you have. I tend to find that I'm cooking it for eight to 10 minutes, seven to 10 minutes per side. And I know that that's a swing in there and that's variable, but it should take you about 30 to 35 minutes to really get the whole pork shoulder nicely browned everywhere. But be prepared. It may take a little longer, it may take a little slower. I'm going to see if I can have is about grab me a glass. I want to try this cocktail out, and then we'll get into the plating part of our tacos while our carnitas fries up. Has anyone ever? I, there's a question for the crowd too, and I know there's a lag, but the explanation I gave earlier of that this dish comes from the marriage of two different cooking methods: the carnitas and the cochinita pibil. Has anyone had a version like this before? Has anyone done this recipe before? Love to hear about if you have. Not that we need first dibs, but it's one of those things that when it came about, I was like, that's a good, that's a good dish. I wonder if someone's done that yet. So here we go. That's looking very good. We have our glass. Now we're going to take our grilled fruits. We have two different kinds. We have our grilled peaches and we have our grilled pineapple. This is the pineapple that we want to use for our cocktail. We're reserving our pineapple enchilado. That's our red chili pineapple. We're going to reserve that for our tacos. So really what we're doing is we're just gonna slice the pineapple. That's gonna go into the pitcher. And then we also wanna save one or two of both slices of pineapple and the peach. And that's gonna go into your cocktail glass. So I'm gonna save that for chef's glass. I'm gonna add 
that quarter pineapple. Here's our grilled peach. Now, th one thing to consider when cutting the grilled peach is I want to make sure that if you end up with one of these grilled peaches in your glass, you're going to get some of that char. So when cutting it, I think the way that I'm going to go with it is, yeah, I'm going to go just like this. That way everyone gets a little bit of that face value, that nice charred face value. I feel like I cut it in wedges, they wouldn't all carry over. They wouldn't all get that nice black addition to them. So then our peach goes in. Reserve, we'll reserve that one for a garnish. I'm going to give this a stir. What do y'all think? Have I deserved a glass? Should I give this a try? I agree with you. I definitely should. Let's get my glass prepped out with some little ice. I'm going to add pineapple to the bottom. Let's see what this is all about. Grilled lemon tiki cocktail for the win. Look at the color on that. Is that gorgeous or what? Yeah, that's beautiful. And then I think also just a chunk of the pineapple, chunk of the grilled peach. You can add, I feel like, a sprig of thyme would probably go really well with this cocktail. A sprig of fresh mint. Salud to your health. Hope you all have a happy holidays. Don't go anywhere. We're plating up this cochinitas in just a second, but I'm a little dry. <laughs> Dang, that's a winner. Hey, Traeger, someone out there should be real proud of this one. That's very good. That is smooth, not overly sweet, and if I said butterscotchy, would you know what I was trying to say? I feel like that comes from the grilled peaches and the pineapple. They're both sweet, but they both have um, a unique sweetness to them, and with the grilling and the grilled lemon, that's a fall cocktail for sure. That's a holiday cocktail for sure. Okay, I better get back to cooking. That's dangerous. I'm gonna prep. So we have, uh, so let's get into, we're gonna get into taco mode. I'm gonna prep our pineapple. This is our red chile grilled pineapple. This is going on top of our tacos. I wanna slice this, let's see. I wanna slice this a little thinner as it's going on individual tacos. I'm going to cut it on the bias just like this. I recall the first time I had pineapple on a taco was in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And have you all heard of tacos al pastor by chance? Right, so it's sliced pork on a vertical spit. Maybe there's a big pineapple on top. And I'll never forget, as I slice this, I think of this, so I might as well take you through that memory. I was a 21-year-old chef, just got into yachting, and we were in Puerto Vallarta. Isabel, can I get a small bowl for this, please? Thank you. We were in Puerto Vallarta, and I remember watching the, I'm going to call him a taco master because he really looked like one, but he had a vertical spit of pork, and he would shave it off like this, gyro style, into the taco in his hand. And once it had the right amount of filling, the last move, and this was sort of his artistic touch, is the last move is he would hit the top of the pineapple with his knife like that, and a piece of pineapple would fall and he would catch it with the taco, and that was your taco. And while slicing it right now, I, uh, I really appreciate taking everyone through that memory. First time, I remember, the taste was exceptional. Um, I think most of us know when cooking with pork that pork just plays so nicely with, um, with fruit. And so, it didn't catch me off guard, but it was the first time I really saw it in a taco format. I was about 22 years old. Stuck with me ever since, so. For toppings, in a lot of these recipes, 
four of these other toppings can be found on the Montana Mex website. But we have our pickled red onion. We have our cabbage slaw as well. So this is just a mix of green and purple cabbage, cilantro, lime, our avocado oil, and our jalapeno seasoning. A nice fresh guacamole, and then a crema to top it all out. You know, the accoutrement or the garnishes that you use in your taco can really end up being sort of what's keen to you or where your taste buds drive. But for me, I feel like the acidity of the onions really brightens up the dish, plus the crunch of the slaw, and that's gonna be on the side. So we'll build one out now so we can all see what we're talking about. Get a hot plate ready for us here. This cast iron is going to be warm coming out. Maybe we'll put it right here. Yeah, we'll put it right here. That way I can build on my countertop here. Here we go. Let's check on our pork. Oh, yeah. So if you can see this, and if you can hear me over the roar of this ranger that's just cranking, I want to point out this is sort of what you're looking for when you're making cochinita specifically. So. I'm gonna cheat this to the camera a little bit, but can you see the bubbling going on, right? So that's the juice that's reducing down, and what you end up being left with, or what remains, is gonna be the lard or the seasoned lard and fat from this roast, and it's gonna really start crisping up the bottoms of this. And so at this point now, as you'll see, I'll start breaking this up a little bit more and what's going to happen is your whole muscles, so I'll take this one as a good example. You'll see how I'm pulling it apart. So now that is going to absorb all of the remaining juices. And you'll also see this section. You see this, this is part of that trotter, so this is the skin. And carnitas is whole pig cookery. So we want to keep that skin in. It's going to add a great mouthfeel, it's going to add great flavor, but we do want to chop it up a little bit. So. That's what I'm doing right now. Just chopping it up. Coming to the other side here, there's a few big pieces that we want to get after. That is looking good. Well, I think we reached that time where we maybe should build out a taco or two. Actually, I'm gonna give this one more minute. I wanna, I wanna give it one more minute of heat. So we're gonna leave it there. And let that cook for just one more minute. I see it just a little bit more. So what happens is when you shred that pork down, like I said, it, evap it, it soaks up all the remaining juices and then that fat will remain on the outside of those shredded pork pieces. I wanna give that just a second to crisp up. So, any questions about our cochinitas tacos? Now's a great time. We've got six minutes left. We're definitely gonna take a bite of this taco, but bring those questions in right now. Let's get them answered. Let's hang in this kitchen space together. Do you prefer flour or tortillas? Great question. I prefer tortillas de masa. So that's corn tortillas. Just the smell of them remind me of my culture, remind me of where I'm from. So I go with corn. However, go with a flour tortilla if that's your jam. And furthermore, you can take a tortilla like this, whether it's flour or corn, set it on a hot griddle, put some shredded cheese on there before you get your filling involved, and then it will be called, then it will be called a gordita. Try that out, super tasty. But for now, we'll just be using just the plain tortilla and filling it with that pork. Can you use tilapia for a ceviche? Yes, you can definitely use a tilapia for a ceviche. The rule of thumb is to stay away from freshwater fishes. So salt water, typically um, less parasitic concern. Great question. I like that, whoever that was. Keep it coming. I used to use tilapia a lot. I feel it's a very neutral flavor to fish. Ceviche can be so strong, it lends itself to maybe the, the lime juice and the other seasonings going into it. Um, and I always found that tilapia was a very tender white flesh. So I would use it a lot, actually, if I didn't have snapper on hand. Do you 
Do you have a favorite warm cocktail now that it's getting cold? I do. If I can get my hands on my buddy's corn moonshine, I like a black currant muddled fresh mint hot toddy made with a, uh, a, corn, a corn clear liqueur. I'm getting our carnitas. It's ready to go. Yeah. This is what we're looking for right here. We're ready to make a taco. Do I have any upcoming hunts? Yes, I'm headed out into the woods for rifle season, maybe two weeks from now, here local in Montana. Um, I'm also hoping to do more waterfowl hunting this year. I really like, really like birds, and I don't do a lot of hunting for birds. So, okay, let's make this taco. Let's take a bite. I hope you all have enjoyed this Traeger Kitchen Live. Don't forget, the apron I'm wearing, made by my dear friend, Ellen Bennett, these are quality aprons. All proceeds of the sale of this apron go for B4BC, boarding for breast cancer. Helping other people out through their ailments is one of the most exceptional things we can do in this world. And so getting yourself a good piece of kitchen kit while helping a good cause, come on. That's a good thing to do. So my encouragement there, let's build this taquito out. I'm digging into our cochinitas pile there. I also like to top this with one of our sauces, which is our habanero sauce. So I'll use that here today too, and I'll top it with that. I feel it adds a really nice spice. Taquito number two. Nice little pile of slaw. Goes a long way. There we go. I always find that having a nice, bright, acidic bite of food like a slaw or a salad with my tacos, I know it may be not traditional. I'm very non-traditional in my cooking, but I do like food that makes sense. And so the acidity of the slaw, the acidity of these pickled red onions, they really help balance the fattiness of the pork itself. And don't get me wrong, we want all of that fattiness, correct? See, chef, we want all that fattiness. But we want to give our palate some relief, and so the acidity helps us reset for the next bite. What's your favorite Mexican cheese? Oof. Favorite Mexican cheese? Queso de Oaxaca, made in the Oaxacan state. It's like uh, what we would know as our mozzarella, super stringy, a little bit punchy, has a little bit of pungency to it, but it's the stringiness that I love. I mean, who doesn't love sort of the long case of the bite? Okay, so I'm adding our last little bit of this dish, which is our pineapple enchilado. It's going right on top. And then I do like a little bit of crema on this, and then I'll finish it with our habanero sauce. But I'll put just a little drop of crema. There we go. This is our sweet and spicy habanero sauce. So we have one of our all the goodies boxes featured right here. Our oil, our seasoning, all three of our sauce blends go in here. Put a little like that. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Bien provecho. I guess I'm just saying that to myself. Let's give this a shot. Hmm. Meaty, a little bit of fatty from that outside skin melting down. What a beautiful dish. Hey, Indra, my sister, if you're listening, thank you for bringing this to the world. And everyone else, thanks for joining me in my kitchen. These Traeger Kitchen Lives fire me up. I'm a chef by trade. I love cooking for others and with others. On that note, two weeks from today is our Thanksgiving Traeger Live. Join it. It's going to be Matt Pittman. It's going to be Amanda Haas. They're going to be covering every single part of the Thanksgiving spread that you will need or want or be able to use in your holiday meals. So salud, cheers from my kitchen to you. 
is from my heart. Thank you so much for cooking with me. Catch you soon. Bye, crew.